Greetings beautiful people, my name is Simon Javan Okelo, I am the CEO of Madaraka Festival and the host of the Madaraka podcast. We are live on YouTube and I'm really privileged to be with an incredible leader in the music industry globally, Alex Antias. How are you my brother? I'm doing great and how you look wonderful, I love Thank the outfit. You. <laughs> Thank you I love so the much. outfit. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. having me over. Of course, it's really an honor to... Uh, you know, spend the next uh, half an hour with you just talking about your music career, talking about some of the artists that you've worked with, talking about how your music has impacted many people's lives and also just trying to get into your, your mind and understand how you work, you know. I'll give you some stuff, not, not everything. <laughs> I want to learn as much as I can. <laughs> but, you know, just to start our conversation, uh, we are at the Grammys uh, at the moment, you know. And uh, the Grammys created a new category of African music. How do you feel about that? Well, it was long overdue uh, yeah. because, let's go back. We, music as we know it today probably wouldn't exist if the roots were not in Africa. Right. With the old log drums and everything. Right. Um, and, de and different polyrhythms. Uh, so, uh, with the explosion of Afrobeats and now I'm a piano and everything else, it was long overdue that uh, African music should have its own category. Actually, two categories this year, right? right. African uh, performance for a single and African album. Right. Um, and um, uh, in the past, African music was grouped together with global, right. but African music became way too big mm -hmm. to be grouped with other uh, ethnic music. Right. It, uh, African music is now part of pop. Think about right. it. Right. We have superstars out of Africa. Right, right. I love that. I love that. You know, when you're speaking about superstars, you work with some of the most uh, celebrated and royal reggae, uh, you know, family, the Mali families, specifically Julian Mali. You know, he's, he has an album that is doing really well that you produced and you've been doing all the work around this project. Can you just go back to how you and Julian connected and then your vision behind your current uh, you know, body of work and uh, your anticipation for winning a Grammy with it? Well, uh, my heart tells me we're going to win it, yeah. but we're in God's hands. At this That's stage, true. nobody knows who's going to win it. That's true. So uh, as far as how it started with Julian, uh, I'm Greek originally, but for many years, I was based in Kingston, Jamaica, where I had a recording studio mm -hmm. and bars and restaurants. Oh, wow. So even though I knew some of the other Marlies uh, before I met Julian, uh, I met Julian one night when he came to my club. Oh. So I said, come on, let me play you some music. I have a studio right within the club. I actually had a recording studio. Mm. So. I said, come on. So he walked in and I played him a rhythm and he says, yeah, I like that. Mm. So next day he came back after we got some rest from, right. the, from partying that night. Right. And uh, we recorded the first song, which was a remake of The Tide is High. Mm. Um, a lot of people th think that that song was a Blondie song from 1980. Because mm. Blondie made it famous in 1980 and it became a num number one record worldwide. Mm. But the original was actually an old reggae ska, Jamaican song from the late right. 60s. Right. right. By a famous Jamaican artist, reggae artist, God bless him, uh, John Holt. Uh -huh. So we did a new version of, of The Tide is High, and one single led to more work. And uh, Julian allowed me to take, to open a new chapter of reggae. So mm -hmm. instead of doing a traditional. Um, Roots Reggae album, we worked on introducing Afrobeats and reggaeton mm -hmm. and, and dancehall and it all came together with his reggae voice. Mm -hmm. I love that. Now, uh, I want you to take us back, further back into how it was growing up in Greece and your journey moving around the world, you know, as we were walking up to the location where we're recording right now. You mentioned that you spent some time in Tacoma, Washington, then you ended up in uh, Los Angeles, and now you're in New York. You are in, you're, you're like a global citizen. Well, <laughs> I, I left Greece when I was very young, and mm. I came to the U.S., and I told you about the Pacific Northwest. I went right. there for 
a few months, just the weather wasn't working for me. All that rain wasn't working for me. So I quickly moved to LA where I lived for about 15 years here in Los Angeles. Uh, and uh, I went to school here. I graduated from uh, Cal State University Dominguez Hills, mm -hmm. not far from where we are right now. Right. And um, then after that, I went back to Europe for a while and then back to New York. And about the same time I was start uh, living in New York, I start going to Jamaica and next thing you know, I have businesses in Jamaica mm. and my, uh, on a monthly basis, I'd be spending half of its month in New York and half in Kingston, mm. where I still have a base. So I still, I'm still based on both places. Mm. Eventually I got married to a beautiful Jamaican woman. Mm. So my ties to the island are deep. Right, right. Forever, forever. You know, uh, when you think about music now, you know, the electronic project you just did with uh, Julian, uh, and, uh, you know, one of the tools that people use to uh, push their music out there is TikTok. I want you to speak about just the value of using TikTok and, of course, social media, and then expound on that by how to push your project beyond just making good music in order for you to be on the Grammy stage. Uh, let's talk about TikTok. being an artist and social media. Okay. Okay. Um, Great music alone is not enough, whether we like to accept that or not. Right. Great music alone without proper marketing is not going to get anywhere. Maybe your friends and your family would say we did a great album, mm -hmm. but as far as being successful, and by successful I don't necessarily mean money, I mean people recognizing and enjoying your creativity and your music, mm -hmm. it requires that you properly market yourself. Mm -hmm. Unless you are blessed to have a, a very wealthy family or to have been discovered by a major label that's willing to put hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars behind you, in today's world, your only opportunity to get people to know you is social media. Right. So the number one thing I recommend to young artists is before you even release music officially, create a huge fan base, right. collect information from them, collect their emails, mm -hmm. collect their phone numbers, mm -hmm. create your own database because as much as we rely on Instagram and TikTok, if you think about it, all our followers are there. What happens if tomorrow morning there is no more Instagram? You lost that. Everything, yeah. So while you use TikTok, while you use Instagram, Keep on collecting your own information by having your own website and sending people there. Mm -hmm. Keep on building your Spotify. And what I, mean, what I mean by building your Spotify, I don't mean buying streams. Because mm -hmm. when you get people to come to, when you, when you spend a couple of dollars and people buy streams, those people are never going to come back. Right. You need to create a strong base by keep on accumulating followers mm -hmm. and listeners mm -hmm. and that is done through hard work and social media mm -hmm. keep on sending people to your spotify page so they can follow mm -hmm. don't send them to listen at this stage we don't even care about listening just send them to follow mm -hmm. so they can so you can keep on growing that mm -hmm. so build your fan base why, you know, by collecting emails, collecting phone numbers, which you can use in the future to let them know about new music, to let them know about uh, touring, to let them know about merchandising. Mm. So build your fan base and maybe release a little song, not even officially, just play it on TikTok and see if you can go viral. Right. And once you build that fan base, then you can start releasing official and get distribution and everything else. Don't, don't, don't make a song and get it out there. We'll get hundreds of thousands of songs that are released every week. Right. Unless you are a big name, mm. nobody's going to hear that song. Mm. So you must build your fan base before you do anything else. And the least expensive way to do that is social media. Right. Speak about NFTs for a moment, because it's something I feel that you're also passionate about. And I, I was. That, oh, you're not passionate uh, about it. Why, why, by the way? That, that, 
that uh, thing came and went. The few people yeah. were quick and smart yeah. and they capitalized. And now you have NFTs that were purchased for hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars that are yeah. worth next to nothing. Yeah. So uh, a few people benefited from, me, mm. from it. I don't see the longevity. Uh-huh. I, was, I was excited about them myself when they first came out. I was looking into it. But as quickly as they came in, they faded out because people thought that you owning art or some form of art mm. that doesn't really exist mm. was going to be the next big thing. Mm. But I guess people want to put art up on their walls <laughs> instead of just having something on their phone, which means anybody can put it on their phone. Right. I can screenshot it and put it on my phone. Right. So... The NFTs is, I think it's kind of, has faded out. It's gone, yeah, it's gone. So one of the things that I know you deal with and I deal with myself uh, is uh, when it comes to racism in the showbiz industry, even at a personal level, my wife is white, you know. Okay, and, and my you, wife is black. <laughs> yeah, and then you're managing a, a, a black artist uh, and, and in, in, in the Grammy environment uh, when a white group like soldiers win the Grammys, there's a lot of talk about why, why is this white group winning the Grammys. But earlier before we began uh, our, our recording today, you, you said a few things that were really profound, you know. A lot of the time, of course there's the racism aspects of things, but also there's the aspect of putting in the work that doesn't, it doesn't matter how you look like, you know. Uh, there are many people who have, who have risen from the ashes and done great things uh, not because of what they look like, you know, but how much work they're willing to put in, how much willing they're... Look, I, I, we are here because of Instagram, you know. I, I hit you up on Instagram and look, we are now talking. I, I, I wasn't just focusing on, I have to interview African artists, I have to interview Jamaican artists. I was like, this guy is doing something great and I want to have a conversation with him. How do you navigate this world? Uh, <clears throat> let's start by saying... Unfortunately, racism in the world is still very strong. I don't care. Yeah. People yeah. say, oh, no, no. Racism in the world is very, very strong. I would hate to be a black male driving a Rolls Royce yeah. because there is a very good chance, that, especially a young black male driving a Rolls yeah. Royce, yeah. which he might have earned because he's a great lawyer or a great doctor right. or a businessman. Right. And the police is going to automatically assume that he must be some kind of a, a, of, a of, of a criminal. Right. So, and getting pulled over as a black male in America, since we're in America right now, is a horrible thing. Right. I don't care who says, no, things are better now. Things are not better now. I can still sense how certain people make other people uncomfortable because they think they are better. Right. So... Enough about that. We know it exists and we know we, we have to do our best to keep on changing things. Right. Within the music industry, it's not strong. It might right. be some with some of the older uh, generations, but overall the music industry is a lot more open, a lot more diverse. Mm-hmm. And within the Recording Academy, since we're here talking about the Grammys, that has really changed because Harvey Mason Jr. and Panos Panay, the two top heads of the Recording Academy, have made sure that we are diversifying, have made sure that we are inclusive. It makes no difference if you're young, old, black, white, anything you are, what kind of music you do. We keep on attracting and signing new members, young members, members of the LGBTQ plus community. We want to ensure that females are well, well represented. Because the Recording Academy a few years ago was an old white man club. That's true. Okay? But that's not the case anymore. I can assure you because I've seen the thousands of new members that have come in and they're young, they are female. You know, we are trying to push female engineers and producers, which are not that many. We're trying to, 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 to get... Of course, you have plenty of black artists, you know, because of the singing and the rapping, but we're trying to ensure that they get the executive positions and we're trying to make sure they get jobs in the studios and they really become part of our family because this is a big extended uh, music family. Right. So racism is not an issue anymore. Right. 
uh, within the music industry. It's an issue in the world, right. but not within the music industry. We are okay. And right. I'm sure you're going to have, you know, some racist uh, artist here and there. What's he? Kid Rock or something? What's his name? <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I don't know. But but yeah. overall, don't, I don't think we'll have racism yeah. issues within the recording industry. Yeah. Uh, it's been very diversified, and a lot of uh, major executives are black, and so we're good there. Right, I love that. So um, you know, uh, I was listening to Soul Dancer, <laughs> and I saw you. You know, I saw you in your element in uh, the with, studio with. with with Yaksta. Yes. Yeah, Yaksta is one of the young Jamaican artists that's uh, doing very well and it's getting better. He's doing a combination of dance hall and reggae. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I love working with him, yes. So I want you to take that and uh, use it to give us just a hint about your process, you know, uh, your process and also some of the artists that you've worked with uh, because you're, 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 you're very diverse in how you produce. And uh, I feel like you're an artist yourself. In a way, I'm not the yeah. type of an artist that is going to go on stage right. and perform. That's not what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I am more of, a, of an artist who creates in the studio. I've done a lot of projects for myself in the past that have been released with electronic and ethnic music. And it's all been about a studio project. So even though my name is there, you're not going to see me touring or performing in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as... Uh, my background is a disc jockey. I started as a disc jockey oh. in clubs in Los Angeles. Mm. As a matter of fact, a long time ago, I was named the best disc jockey in LA oh. for the year. Oh. I can't remember what year it was, but it was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and from there, I became a remixer, started doing club versions of mm. songs. Mm. Uh, and one thing led to the other. Uh, I love, my basis is electronic music, whether I use it for reggae or dancehall or reggaeton or uh, house or deep house or whatever I do. Uh, my basis is creating rhythms and nice bass lines and a keyboard line. Uh, I don't write lyrics. Uh, that's up to either the artist or the songwriter. Mm -hmm. um, so then I present that to artists who put their part on it. I love that. So then uh, speak about, I, I know we spoke a little bit about Julian, but I just want you to speak about the roster of artists uh, and relationships you have, because I also saw recently on your Instagram, you're, you're representing Popcorn music, you know? Polka? Popcorn. Oh, no, no, I was representing Popcorn for the outfit I was wearing. Ah, I see. Yes, I see, because uh, Popcorn has a wonderful uh, clothing line called Unruly. Right, right. You right. saw the, the, yeah, the jacket ah, and everything. I see. So, I see. Um, see, like, as we already said, I'm not Jamaican, but I feel Jamaican is home for right, me. Right, and right. especially with, you know, with the deep connection of all of my friends there and the artists and my wife, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to do my best to represent the island outside of the island, uh, whether it's the Grammys uh, or, or, or anything else we do. And my goal... Here, here's a very important goal I have. Mm -hmm. I feel that reggae and dancehall have been major contributors to Afrobeats, uh, dancehall, I'm, I'm sorry, Afrobeats and reggaeton, mm -hmm. and even pop music. You have uh, artists like Rihanna or, 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 or um, who else? Not, it's coming to mind now. Um, anyway, a lot of our rhythms that you find in Afrobeat and Dancehall mm -hmm. have been incorporated in pop music. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yet, a lot of Dancehall has not been recognized enough. Right. 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 Uh, for example, I'm sure you, you understand the whole uh, situation happening right now where you have uh, 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 Jamaican uh, pro uh, produced music from the old Dancehall days saying, hey, this is our rhythm from the song Dembo. Mm -hmm. And the entire reggaeton um, genre has been based on that one rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think there is anything wrong that an entire genre has been based on one old dancehall rhythm. Right. But we need to get more Jamaican artists to be recognized internationally right. for who they are. Yes, right. we have San Paul and we have Sagi who have you know, received their... Uh, recognition. I'm not even going to talk about Bob Marley because he is 
God when it comes to this. That's like, true. He, he's, a, he's more than a musician. He's a philosopher, and especially with a movie coming out in 10 right, days. Right. Uh, but my goal is to bring young Jamaican artists to the world, and not necessarily reggae and dancehall. I'm working with an artist right now. Her name is Marcy Lee, a Jamaican girl, and we're doing a pop dance project with a Caribbean flavor to it. Mm. So that's my goal. I want young Jamaican artists to be introduced to the world. I love that. Yeah, you know, when you think about young Jamaican artists, there are a lot of them right now that are doing really well. You know, Proto J, yeah. uh, Lila IK, Lucky, yeah. you know, uh, you know, of course, Kofi, you know, uh, but the list goes on, you know, and I feel like... Chronics. Of Chronics, Chronics, I feel like... Jesse Royal. Jesse Royal, Kabaka Pyramid, you know. Kabaka got the Grammy last year. That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. That's right. Uh, you know, and then I feel like Kabaka uh, was really supported by by, you know, uh, by Junior Gong. You know? Yeah, Damien. Damien. And uh, I feel that that was a really incredible collaboration. You Absolutely. Know? And uh, collaboration is a piece that many people overlook, you know. Uh, can you speak to that for a moment? Because I feel that you're very collaborative. You work with so many people. Uh, you, you go to so many places. And just in spending these last few minutes with you, I've learned the value of extreme collaboration. <laughs> well, um, it's it goes back to marketing. Yeah. Whether you market to the public mm -hmm. or to your fellow musicians and producers, mm -hmm. you have to make people aware of your projects. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, once you bring people together, especially from diverse cultures or genres of music, mm -hmm. you open new doors for everyone. Mm -hmm. One of the things we did with Julian's album, we had a song with a very famous reggae artist from Argentina that oh. sings in Spanish. His name is Bayano. Mm. He is one of the legends down there. Mm. So he became, a f he, he, he was featured in one of the songs mm. where Julian did the English parts and uh, Bayano did the, the Spanish parts. Mm. Uh, and that song was co-produced uh, and, and remixed by Mr. Sonic, a guy from Venezuela mm. who, who is a friend of mine. Um, so now you have Bayano from Argentina, mm -hmm. Mr. Sonic from Venezuela, mm -hmm. Julian, a Jamaican, mm -hmm. and me, a Greek, mm -hmm. on one song. Right. So now the Venezuelan door is open and the Argentinian door is open, mm -hmm. plus everything else. Right. So we get, you get more support from the Latin community. Mm -hmm. And we'll have another song on the album. Uh, with a guy from the Dominican Republic, also doing a Spanish part. His name is Melo El Melodico. Younger artist, not as known, but that opened the Dominican door. Right. And they are excited there because he's part of an album that has been nominated for a Grammy. Right. So by doing that, you open doors for many people. Therefore, you open doors for your project. Right. I love that. We are getting close to the end of our time together, so I want you to think of your closing remarks. But before you do that, I want you to, to share three ideas when it comes to event production uh, because everything we do as producers even the Grammy is an event you know and this is the 10 year anniversary of the Madaraka festival and a lot of our fans we brought together over 75,000 people in the last 10 years that's wonderful a lot of them ask Simon how have, you, how have you been able to do this for 10 years and so I'm asking my guests to help answer that question by giving three tips of what do you need to think about to make your events or music festival successful? I don't know if I'm going to give you three, but I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. Yeah. Marketing. Marketing. Okay. You have to see who is your fan base and continue marketing to them. But you also have to see who else can you bring in to your fan base. For example, are you going after... Um, the reggae community in Hawaii, which is huge. Mm -hmm. Or are you going after the reggae community in France, which is huge. Mm -hmm. French uh, reggae is very big. Mm -hmm. um, are you looking at other African communities that maybe you haven't targeted yet? Mm -hmm. So it goes back to marketing. Mm -hmm. Bring more people, introduce more people to, your, um, to what you do. I hate to say this, but I think meta ads, right. if they're done properly, still are still relevant. 
to bring attention to what you do. Mm -hmm. Meta ads, that let's say that you're going to send them to your website. Mm -hmm. Meta ads that you're going to send them maybe to a Spotify playlist mm -hmm. that has music from your, from your festivals. Mm -hmm. So if you want to invest a few dollars, you don't have to invest too much in Meta ads. You can invest $20, $30 a day, mm -hmm. $10 a day. Mm -hmm. But as long as you know what you're doing, get somebody who understands that. Mm -hmm. Then you say, okay, let me target concert goers from South Africa mm -hmm. that like reggae music or like African music. Mm -hmm. and, and choose some. South America is a huge market. Mm -hmm. South America is a huge market. Mm -hmm. And they love reggae. We have huge followings for Julian in Peru, in Argentina, Brazil. Brazil loves Julian. Mm -hmm. Brazil could be, you know, you could create a bridge and do your festival in Brazil. Right. So that's my three in one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in closing, uh, share a few remarks as we close our time together. Just for the sake of our viewers, I've been here with Alex. Uh, and Teas. And Teas, who is an incredible, incredible leader. As you've heard from him, you know, so many nuggets of wisdom. And, you know, he's a producer, he's an entrepreneur, he's an artist, you know, he's doing so many things. But we are here for the Grammy and uh, he's, him and his artists have been nominated uh, for the Grammys. And Julian Marley, who is working closely with, this is the third nomination that he's getting. So I also, you know, I hope you guys win it, you know, because now I'll have a direct connection. Well, to so far we're looking good because we got a nomination. We got yeah. a medallion last night. Speak about that for a moment. Oh, well, everyone who is nominated gets a medallion. And within our industry, we consider a nomination a win. Right. To, be, to be nominated right. is a lot of hard work. Right. It's not simple. Right. Uh, so this is a win already. But right. if we hold the, stat the, the statuette today, yeah. that would be even nicer. I love it. I love it. Okay. Thank you, my brother. Of course. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. <laughs>